Marvel Comics has had one of the best track records out of any publisher in all of history. But every company has its small blemishes. Looking at you, Mark Miller's trouble. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at Marvel Comics Ultimate Universe Ultimatum Issue 2. This is part two in a five-part series, detailing the what the f moments in Ultimatum. We once again hop back into the fray to look at one of the most edgy universes the early 2000s had to offer. Our story picks up where issue one left off. New York is now no longer flooded thanks to Sue Storm, and Spidey tries to do damage control and rescue as many people as he can. He's struggling to lift a car and rescue someone trapped underneath. And of course, this wouldn't be Spider-Man if somebody wasn't immediately crap-talking him while he's trying to help them. What more do you want from me? <laughs> but unfortunately, due to all the chaos, no one's listening to Spider-Man's cries for help. Well, except for the Incredible Hulk. Spider-Man is a bit nervous, which I completely understand, considering this Hulk has gone on a rampage after being injected with a new super soldier serum, nearly wiping out New York in a, uh, a, a frenzy of sorts, I guess you could say. Hey, yo, what the f We cut to the S.H.I.E.L.D. base of operations in Lower Manhattan, where Tony breaks through a window holding Captain America's body. And of course, the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents are immediately telling him to stop where he is, while Tony starts screaming for help. That's when we're introduced to the Ultimate Universe's director of S.H.I.E.L.D. And hilariously, it's not Nick Fury. In fact, it's actually Carol Danvers at this time. What did he say? At this point in the story, Nick Fury is missing. So acting director of S.H.I.E.L.D. is Carol. What the fuck? She explains that the S.H.I.E.L.D. soldiers were just trying to do their jobs. They're trying to deal with the entire tidal wave that just hit Manhattan and the fact that Eastern Europe has been completely flash frozen. Apparently, volcanoes are erupting in the Amazon. So whatever Magneto has done has thrown the world into pure chaos. Tony says Cap's not breathing. He needs help. And Carol immediately demands that a medical unit get up here to help him. As they're trying to resuscitate Cap, Carol asks what happened. That's where Tony explains Cap was drowning, or possibly had drowned, he didn't know. But he pulled him out of the water. He was awake. He asks if the rest of the team was okay. And when they went looking for the missing team members, Cap collapsed. And he hasn't woken up since. And of course, Tony wants a drink. Oh, that demon in a bottle story is really a canon event, huh? The trauma team's not giving up, as they keep trying to resuscitate Cap, hitting him time after time with a defibrillator. Carol offers Tony the full backing of S.H.I.E.L.D. to help track down Magneto and bring him to justice. And the top G Tony Stark tells her, Shut up, bitch! <laughs> she says, I was only trying to help. Tony says he needs to get out of here and tells her to give Cap back his S.H.I.E.L.D. if he wakes up. She says, don't you mean when he wakes up? But suddenly, an announcement comes over the loudspeaker and it's an emergency. They're under attack. So, Tony has to put his helmet back on and suit up. We go back to Yellow Jacket and Hawkeye still searching for Janet. The Wasp has been missing in action since everything went down. And justifiably, Hank is freaking out. He keeps screaming for his wife, but Hawkeye's trying to get his attention, and it's not working. Until Yellow Jacket grabs Hawkeye and threatens to squash him like a bug. <laughs> Thinking quickly, Hawkeye says that he was altered. He was part of the Super Soldier program and has enhanced vision and says he'd be able to help. He's smaller than Yellow Jacket, so he'd be able to look on the ground and see if he can find any sign of Janet. And reluctantly, the two agree to work together. And with that, the two team up to find Janet. Back at the Baxter building, the Human Torch is still missing. Franklin Richards, also MIA. And Reed is just effed off into the night to try to find out what's going on here. So, with Sue Storm basically in a coma, her only companion at this point, is Ben Grimm, the thing. He's pleading his case. He doesn't know what to do. He just wants some help. He just wants to know what he has to do to make sure everything is okay. But his hands start to disappear in front of his eyes. Something's not right here. Then the floor starts to become invisible. Turns out, now that Susan's asleep, she's not able to control her powers. And suddenly, Ben gets shot back with a force field, pushed through multiple walls, and nearly thrown out a window. 
the thing says read pal wherever the heck you are things with Susie just got a lot harder than either of us figured Speaking of Reed Richards, he's still going out into the sea to find out what the heck is going on and try to find Magneto, since Professor X told everyone who was to blame for this atrocity. When, all of a sudden, all of his systems go down and his ship starts to levitate. He thinks that Namor's behind this, but it turns out no. It was Doctor Doom himself. We now see Thor flying on Pegasus, trying to find Valkyrie. There's no sign of her and he ends up flying all the way to the Statue of Liberty where, unfortunately, he finds her, lifeless, just laying there. He says, it can't be. Valkyrie, my love, this is wrong. Things will change. As he picks up a blade and is sent to Valhalla, where he is face to face with Hela, Mistress of Death. And he's only there for one reason. He's going to get Valkyrie back. Hela throws wave after wave of the undead at him, and Thor is able to swat them away like flies. He's on a mission, and nothing at this point is going to be able to stop him, but right before he's about to get taken out with a sneak attack, <laughs> Captain America comes to save the day. Thor asks, how is it even possible? And Cap says, I don't know, but I guess we'll figure it out when this is over. Now, I'm going to pause right here and say I haven't read beyond this at this point, and I have absolutely no idea how Captain America got there, but I'm assuming he's there because he is a warrior, and this is technically the afterlife for warriors, and I'm guessing the only reason that he's there temporarily is because he's still fighting for his life back at S.H.I.E.L.D. Now, back with Yellow Jacket and Hawkeye, it looks like Clint sees something, tells Hank to put him down, so he says, stay here, Hank, it's probably nothing and says, hell of a time to have just lost my pistols. Jan. We see the Blob, one of the original villains of the X-Men, member of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, eating the Wasp. We have no idea if she was alive or not by the time he started feeding, and it is truly a horrific sight. This is, quite possibly, one of the most disturbing panels the Ultimate Universe has had so far. Across multiple universes, Wasp has been a key member, whether it be a founding member of the Ultimates or the Avengers. And now, unceremoniously, she's been taken out, possibly due to a cataclysmic wave, or possibly being eaten alive by an evil mutant. Now, back at Charles Xavier's Academy, Magneto is there. And Charles tells Magneto, why am I not surprised to find you here? Magneto tries to gaslight him into thinking that, no matter what, they've always thought similarly. And Charles says, never like this, Magneto. And he says, so we've come to that? No longer referring to me by my first name. Why am I not surprised? Xavier asks, what do you want me to say? That I agree with your doomsday option? When you know I would stop at nothing to keep you from destroying the Earth and everyone on it? And what? For revenge? Because your children... Wanda and Pietro were murdered? Do you honestly believe this will even the scales? And Magneto responds that his children's death merely opened his eyes and says, after thousands of years, humans have done nothing but destroy the planet. War, famine, ecological ruin. He says, when God didn't like what he had created, he'd washed it all away in 40 days and 40 nights, and he will do it in three. And base Charles Xavier says, I'd be stating the obvious by pointing out, you are not God. Emotional damage! They will hunt you down and I will lead the charge. No matter what good you think you're doing, you'll be remembered as a madman. Like Pol Pot, Bin Laden, Hitler. Magneto begins to become enraged, shaking with anger. I knew when I came here tonight, this was inevitable. And with that, he snaps Charles Xavier's neck, saying, In the past, you've had a hand in every one of my failures, toppling the best laid plans. It had to stop. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe. 
as it really does help the channel. Consider becoming a member as another way to support the channel. We'll be uploading new videos about Ultimatum on a weekly basis, so go ahead and stay tuned. We also post daily YouTube shorts, so go ahead and check them out. If there's another comic book arc you'd like to see me cover, go ahead and let me know down below. Thank you all for watching, I hope you have a great day, and as always, I'll catch you in the next one.